In 1956, The Ten Commandments mesmerized audiences with its epic storytelling and unforgettable performances, etching its cast into Hollywood history. Charlton Heston, Moses Charlton Heston was more than just an actor. He was a force of nature, a man whose presence on screen commanded attention and respect. Born on October 4, 1923, in Wilmette, Illinois, Heston's early life was marked by a love for adventure and the arts. Growing up in the Midwest, he was drawn to the stage at a young age, finding solace in the world of acting. It was a path that would eventually lead him to Hollywood, where he would become one of the most iconic figures in cinematic history. Heston's journey to stardom wasn't without its challenges. After serving in the United States Army Air Forces during World War II, he returned to civilian life determined to make his mark in the world of acting. He began with small roles in theater and television, slowly building his reputation as a talented and dedicated performer. But it wasn't until Cecil B. DeMille cast him in the lead role of the Ten Commandments that Heston's career truly skyrocketed. Now, The Ten Commandments wasn't just any movie. It was an epic, a grand spectacle that required a leading man with the presence and gravitas to carry the weight of its monumental story. Heston, with his chiseled features and commanding voice, was the perfect choice to portray Moses, the prophet who led the Israelites out of Egypt. At the age of 33, he took on the role, immersing himself in the character with a dedication that was nothing short of extraordinary. Moses is a figure of immense importance in religious history, a leader chosen by God to deliver his people from slavery. Heston's portrayal of Moses was powerful, intense, and deeply moving. He captured the inner turmoil of a man who was both a leader and a servant, chosen to fulfill a divine mission, but also deeply human, struggling with doubt and fear. The role was physically and emotionally demanding, with Heston spending long days on set, enduring the harsh conditions of the Egyptian desert and the weight of the film's expectations. Yet, he never faltered, delivering a performance that would become one of the most memorable in cinematic history. This role didn't just make Heston a star, it cemented his status as a Hollywood legend. The Ten Commandments was a massive success, both critically and commercially, and Heston's portrayal of Moses became the defining role of his career. The image of Heston as Moses, standing at the edge of the Red Sea, staff in hand, commanding the waters to part, is one that has been etched into the minds of generations of moviegoers. But Heston was far from a one-hit wonder. After the Ten Commandments, his career continued to flourish. He starred in a string of successful films, including Ben-Hur, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Actor, Planet of the Apes, and El Cid. Each role showcased his versatility and his ability to bring complex characters to life, further solidifying his place in Hollywood history. Off-screen, Heston was just as fascinating. He was a man of strong convictions, known for his activism and his passionate defense of the Second Amendment. He served as president of the National Rifle Association, NRA, from 1998 to 2003, a position that aligned with his belief in the right to bear arms. Heston was also deeply committed to civil rights, participating in the 1963 March on Washington and supporting Martin Luther King, Jr., S. Fight for Equality. Despite his rugged on-screen persona, Heston was a man of culture with a love for art, literature, and music. He was married to his wife, Lydia, for over 60 years, a testament to his dedication and love for his family. Together, they raised two children, and Heston often spoke about how much he cherished his time with them. However, as the years passed, Heston's health began to decline. In 2002, he publicly announced that he had been diagnosed with symptoms consistent with Alzheimer's disease. It was a heartbreaking revelation, as the man who had once played such strong and powerful characters was now facing a battle he couldn't win. 
Heston faced the disease with the same courage and dignity that had defined his life and career, choosing to step away from public life to spend his remaining years with his family. Charlton Heston passed away on April 5, 2008, at the age of 84, after a long battle with Alzheimer's. His death marked the end of an era, but his legacy lives on. He left behind a body of work that continues to inspire and entertain, a testament to his talent and his dedication to his craft. Heston wasn't just an actor. He was a storyteller, a man who brought larger-than-life characters to the screen with a depth and humanity that made them unforgettable. Edward G. Robinson, Dathan Born on December 12, 1893 in Bucharest, Romania, Robinson's early life was far from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. His family, Jewish immigrants facing persecution in Eastern Europe, made the brave decision to seek a better life in the United States. When Robinson was only 10 years old, they embarked on a journey across the Atlantic, eventually settling in New York City. The bustling streets of New York provided a stark contrast to the life Robinson had known in Romania. But it was in this vibrant city that Robinson's passion for acting began to take shape. Despite the challenges of adapting to a new country and culture, he found solace in the arts. He studied at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, where he honed his craft and began to develop the skills that would later make him a legend. Robinson's early career was rooted in the stage, where his talent quickly became evident. He had a natural ability to command attention, his deep, gravelly voice and intense eyes captivating audiences. As he transitioned from stage to screen, Robinson brought with him a sense of authenticity and depth that set him apart from many of his contemporaries. His first major break in Hollywood came with the role of Rico Bandello in the 1931 film Little Caesar. This role cemented his reputation as one of the era's most formidable actors, capable of portraying complex, morally ambiguous characters with nuance and power. By the time the Ten Commandments came around in 1956, Robinson was already a well-established star. But the role of Dathan offered him a unique challenge. Dathan was no ordinary character. He was the embodiment of treachery and greed, a man who betrayed his own people for personal gain. Robinson's portrayal of Dathan was nothing short of masterful. He infused the character with a sly cunning and a sense of self-serving ambition that made Dathan one of the most memorable antagonists in the film. Robinson's interpretation of Dathan wasn't just about playing a villain. It was about understanding the complexities of a man driven by fear and desire. In every scene, Robinson's Dathan is calculating, always looking for the angle that will benefit him the most, even if it means sacrificing others. His performance added a layer of tension to the film, making the story of Moses and the Israelites even more compelling. Audiences and critics alike were captivated by Robinson's performance. His ability to bring depth to a character that could have easily been one-dimensional was widely praised. Robinson didn't just play Dathan, he inhabited the role, making the audience both despise and understand the character's motivations. This duality in his performance is what made Robinson stand out in a cast filled with larger-than-life figures. After the Ten Commandments, Robinson's career continued to thrive. He remained a prominent figure in Hollywood, taking on roles that allowed him to explore the darker sides of human nature. Films like Key Largo and The Cincinnati Kid showcased his versatility and his ability to adapt to different genres and characters. Robinson's presence on screen was always powerful, whether he was playing a mobster, a gambler, or a corrupt politician. However, Robinson's life wasn't without its challenges. In the 1960s, he was diagnosed with bladder cancer, a battle that would last for several years. Despite his illness, Robinson continued to work, refusing to let his health issues define him. 
He remained active in the industry, taking on roles that challenged him and allowed him to continue his passion for acting. Robinson's final years were marked by a quiet dignity. He passed away on January 26, 1973, at the age of 79, leaving behind a legacy that has endured long after his death. His contributions to the film industry were immense, and his performances continued to be studied and admired by actors and filmmakers alike. Robinson was more than just a character actor. He was a pioneer who brought a new level of intensity and realism to the screen. Yvonne De Carlo Sephora. Yvonne DiCarlo's life was like a classic Hollywood story filled with glamour, drama, and a touch of heartbreak. Born on September 1, 1922, in Vancouver, Canada, DiCarlo's early years were far from the luxurious lifestyle she would later come to know in Hollywood. Raised primarily by her mother after her father abandoned the family, Yvonne grew up in a modest household. But from a young age, she was determined to escape the ordinary and make a name for herself in the world of entertainment. Her path to Hollywood was anything but easy. DiCarlo's mother, recognizing her daughter's talent and potential, enrolled her in dance and drama classes, nurturing her budding passion for performance. Yvonne was a natural on stage, and by her late teens, she had become a fixture in Vancouver's local theater scene. However, the bright lights of Hollywood beckoned, and Yvonne, with her striking beauty and undeniable talent, set her sights on the film industry. When Yvonne arrived in Hollywood, she was just another hopeful actress trying to break into the business. But her determination paid off. She began to land small roles in various films, showcasing her versatility as both a dramatic actress and a dancer. Her big break came in 1945 when she starred in Salome, Where She Danced, a film that catapulted her to stardom. Her exotic looks and charismatic screen presence made her a favorite among audiences, and she quickly became one of Hollywood's most sought-after leading ladies. By the time The Ten Commandments came along in 1956, Yvonne DiCarlo was already an established star. But the role of Sephora, Moses' devoted wife, offered her something different, a chance to be part of a truly epic film that would go down in history. Playing Sephora required DiCarlo to tap into a deep well of emotion, portraying a woman whose faith and love sustained one of the most important figures in religious history. Sephora is not just a supportive wife, she's a symbol of strength and loyalty. Throughout the film, her character stands by Moses as he struggles with his divine mission, offering him solace and unwavering support. DiCarlo brought a quiet dignity to the role, her expressive eyes conveying a depth of feeling that words alone could not capture. She made Sephora more than just a background character. She made her a vital part of Moses' journey, a beacon of love and faith in a tumultuous time. On set, DiCarlo's professionalism and warm personality made her beloved by the cast and crew. She was known for her ability to light up a room and her interactions with co-stars like Charlton Heston were marked by mutual respect and camaraderie. Despite the challenging conditions of filming in the Egyptian desert, DiCarlo remained committed to her role, delivering a performance that would become one of the highlights of her career. After the Ten Commandments, Yvonne DiCarlo's career took an interesting turn. While she continued to work in films, it was her role on television that would bring her a new level of fame. In 1964, she was cast as Lily Munster in The Munsters, a quirky sitcom about a family of friendly monsters living in suburban America. The role of Lily, the vampire matriarch of the Munster family, was a stark contrast to her previous work, but DiCarlo embraced it with enthusiasm. Her portrayal of Lily Munster was both comedic and endearing, making her a beloved character in American television history. However, life off-screen wasn't always easy for Yvonne. She married actor and stuntman Robert Drew Morgan in 1955, and the couple had two sons. 
But the marriage was far from perfect, and De Carlo faced financial difficulties, particularly after her husband was severely injured in an accident that left him unable to work. The family's financial struggles forced Yvonne to take on more work, often accepting roles in less prestigious films to make ends meet. De Carlo's health also began to decline in her later years. She battled with heart problems, and in 1998, she suffered a stroke that marked the beginning of her final health decline. Despite these challenges, she remained resilient, continuing to make public appearances and engage with her fans. She was a true star, one who never lost her connection to the people who admired her work. Yvonne De Carlo passed away on January 8, 2007, at the age of 84, from heart failure. Her death marked the end of an era, but her legacy in Hollywood remains as vibrant as ever. She is remembered not just for her roles in iconic films and television shows, but for the strength and grace she displayed throughout her life. Yvonne De Carlo was more than just an actress. She was a pioneer for women in the industry, a symbol of resilience, and a beloved figure whose work continues to inspire and entertain. Cedric Hardwick, Seti First his early years were shaped by a fascination with the stage, a passion that would drive him to leave the quiet life of the countryside and pursue a career in the theater. Hardwick's journey to becoming one of Britain's most respected actors began at the prestigious Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, RADA. It was here that he honed his craft, developing the deep, resonant voice and the commanding presence that would become his trademarks. By the time he was in his 20s, Hardwick was already making a name for himself in the British theater scene. His performances were marked by a precision and a gravitas that set him apart from his peers, earning him roles in some of the most significant productions of the time. But Hardwick wasn't content to remain confined to the stage. The allure of the silver screen called to him and in the 1930s, he began to transition from theater to film. This move was seamless for Hardwick, whose ability to convey complex emotions with subtlety and power translated perfectly to the medium of film. He quickly became a favorite among directors, known for his ability to bring depth and dignity to any role he took on. By the time The Ten Commandments was in production, Cedric Hardwick was already an established figure in both British and American cinema. In 1956, he was cast as Seti I, the Pharaoh of Egypt, a role that would further solidify his legacy as one of the greats. Seti I was no ordinary character. He was a ruler, a father, and a man of immense power and responsibility. Hardwick's portrayal of Seti captured the essence of a leader burdened by the weight of his crown, yet still human enough to love his son and struggle with the decisions he had to make. Hardwick brought a quiet intensity to the role of Seti, infusing the character with a sense of dignity and authority. His performance was subtle yet powerful, with every gesture and expression conveying the inner turmoil of a man torn between duty and compassion. Seti's scenes with his son Ramses, played by Yul Brynner, are particularly memorable. Hardwick managed to convey a father's love and a ruler's sternness in equal measure, making Seti a complex and relatable character despite his royal status. The role of Seti I was significant not just for the film, but for Hardwick's career as well. It showcased his ability to portray characters of great power and influence, adding another layer to his already impressive repertoire. For audiences, Hardwick Seti was a figure of wisdom and authority, a ruler whose presence was felt long after he left the screen. For Hardwick, the role was a crowning achievement in a career that spanned over four decades. Even after the Ten Commandments, Hardwick continued to work in film and television, though his health began to decline. He suffered from emphysema, a condition that gradually took its toll on his once powerful voice and robust presence. Despite his illness, Hardwick remained committed to his craft, taking on roles that allowed him to continue doing what he loved. Cedric Hardwick passed away on August 6, 1964, in New York City, leaving behind a legacy that few could match. 
His contribution to both theater and film was immense, and his performances continue to be studied and admired by actors and filmmakers alike. Hardwick was more than just a performer. He was an artist who brought a unique blend of dignity, power, and humanity to every role he played. Deborah Paget, Lilia. Born on August 19, 1933, in Denver, Colorado, Deborah was destined for the spotlight from a young age. Her family recognized her talent early on, and by the time she was just 15, she had already signed her first contract with 20th Century Fox. Hollywood was a dream that many aspired to, but for Deborah, it quickly became a reality. With her striking beauty and undeniable talent, she stood out even in a sea of aspiring young actors. As a child star, Deborah Paget's early years in Hollywood were marked by a series of successful roles that showcased her versatility and charisma. She quickly rose to fame, becoming one of the most promising young actresses of her time. Her performances in films like Broken Arrow and Love Me Tender opposite Elvis Presley established her as a leading lady who could hold her own alongside some of the biggest names in the industry. Each role she took on seemed to build on the last, creating a career trajectory that many young actors could only dream of. By the time she was cast in The Ten Commandments, Deborah Paget was already a well-known figure in Hollywood. But the role of Lilia, the beautiful and tragic slave girl, would become one of her most memorable performances. Lilia was a character of deep emotion, a woman caught in the brutal realities of slavery but still holding on to a sense of hope and love. Paget brought a tender vulnerability to the role, making Lilia one of the most sympathetic characters in the film. As Lilia, Paget had the difficult task of portraying a woman who is both strong and fragile, a character who endures immense suffering yet remains resilient. Her scenes with Joshua, played by John Derrick, are some of the most important in the film, capturing the deep connection between the two characters and the harsh realities of the world they inhabit. Paget's portrayal of Lilia was both delicate and powerful, earning her praise from both critics and audiences alike. The audience's reaction to Paget's performance was overwhelmingly positive. She managed to capture the hearts of viewers, making Lilia a beloved character in a film filled with larger-than-life figures. For many, her portrayal was one of the emotional anchors of the Ten Commandments, adding a layer of humanity to the epic narrative. The film's success only further cemented Paget's status as a star and her performance as Lilia became one of the defining moments of her career. However, despite her success, Deborah Paget's time in the spotlight was relatively brief. After a series of roles in the late 1950s and early 1960s, she made the surprising decision to retire from acting at a young age. For many, it seemed like an odd choice, especially given her rising star. But for Paget, the decision was personal. She chose to step away from Hollywood to focus on her family and her faith, a choice that she never seemed to regret. Now at 89 years old, Deborah Paget lives a quiet life, far removed from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. She has remained largely out of the public eye, choosing to live her life away from the spotlight that once defined her. Yet her legacy in Hollywood remains intact. Those who remember her performances remember them fondly, and her work continues to be appreciated by new generations of film lovers. Nina Fosh, Bithia. Nina Fosh's journey to Hollywood began far from the glittering lights of Los Angeles in the historic city of Leiden, Netherlands. Born on April 20, 1924, Nina's early life was shaped by her family's deep connection to the arts. Her mother, a concert pianist, and her father, a classical music conductor, instilled in her a love for the creative world. But as Europe became increasingly unstable in the lead-up to World War II, Nina's family made the difficult decision to leave their home and move to the United States, seeking safety and new opportunities. Arriving in America as a young girl, Nina quickly adapted to her new surroundings. 
The vibrant culture of New York City, with its bustling theater scene, proved to be the perfect backdrop for a young woman with dreams of becoming an actress. Nina's talent was apparent from the start, and it wasn't long before she began to find work in films and television. Her early career was marked by a series of small but memorable roles, each one showcasing her unique ability to bring depth and nuance to her characters. Nina had a presence that was impossible to ignore, and Hollywood soon took notice. By the time she was cast in The Ten Commandments, Nina Fosh had already established herself as a versatile and talented actress. In 1956, she took on the role of Bithia, the daughter of the Pharaoh who defies her father's orders and saves the infant Moses from the Nile. Bithia is a complex character, torn between her loyalty to her father and her compassion for the helpless child she rescues. Fosh brought a regal grace to the role, portraying Bithia as a woman of both strength and vulnerability. Playing Bithia required Fosh to navigate a delicate balance. On one hand, Bithia is a member of the Egyptian royal family, accustomed to power and privilege. On the other, she is a woman driven by a deep sense of morality, willing to defy her father and the entire Egyptian empire to protect an innocent life. Fosh captured this duality beautifully, bringing a quiet intensity to her performance that resonated with audiences. Her portrayal of Bithia was both commanding and compassionate, making her one of the most memorable characters in the film. The role was not without its challenges. Filming in the harsh conditions of the Egyptian desert, Fosh had to contend with extreme heat, long hours, and the physical demands of the role. Yet, she approached the role with professionalism and dedication, determined to bring authenticity and depth to Bithia. Her performance was praised by critics and audiences alike, further solidifying her reputation as one of Hollywood's most respected actresses. As Fosh's career continued, she remained a prominent figure in both film and television. She was known for her versatility, taking on roles that ranged from dramatic to comedic, always bringing a unique perspective to her characters. But her later years were marked by a battle with myelodysplasia, a rare blood disorder that gradually took its toll on her health. Despite her illness, Fosh continued to work, never allowing her condition to diminish her passion for acting. Nina Fosh passed away on December 5, 2008, at the age of 84. Her death marked the end of a remarkable career, but her legacy lives on. Fosh's contributions to cinema are remembered not just for the roles she played, but for the way she approached her craft, with grace, intelligence, and an unwavering commitment to her art. Her portrayal of Bithia in The Ten Commandments remains a standout performance, a testament to her ability to bring complexity and humanity to even the most challenging roles. John Derek Joshua Growing up in the heart of the film industry, Derek was surrounded by the glitz and glamour of Hollywood from an early age. His striking looks and natural charisma quickly caught the attention of casting directors, and it wasn't long before he began his journey into the world of acting. Hollywood was a town that thrived on fresh faces, and Derek's was one that audiences couldn't forget. Derek's path to stardom was paved with early roles that showcased his good looks and budding talent. He quickly established himself as a leading man, with a style that combined a rugged charm with a boyish vulnerability. Films like Knock on Any Door and All the King's Men solidified his status as a rising star, and by the time The Ten Commandments came along in 1956, Derek was more than ready to take on a role that would challenge him both physically and emotionally. In The Ten Commandments, John Derek took on the role of Joshua, the young warrior who would eventually lead the Israelites into the Promised Land. Joshua is a character of immense strength and faith, a man who stands by Moses' side through thick and thin, ready to fight for his people's freedom. Derek's portrayal of Joshua was imbued with a sense of determination and righteousness, capturing the essence of a man destined for greatness.
His performance was both heroic and relatable, bringing depth to a character who could have easily been overshadowed by the film's larger-than-life figures. On set, Derek was known for his professionalism and his easygoing nature. He formed close bonds with his co-stars, particularly Charlton Heston, who played Moses. The dynamic between Joshua and Moses is one of mutual respect and loyalty, and Derek's interactions with Heston off-screen help to bring authenticity to their on-screen relationship. Derek approached the role with a sense of seriousness and dedication, fully immersing himself in the physical demands of playing a warrior and the emotional complexities of a man of faith. After the Ten Commandments, John Derrick's career took several interesting turns. While he continued to act, his true passion lay behind the camera. Derrick transitioned into directing, where he made a name for himself with films like Tarzan, The Ape Man, and Bolero. His directorial style was bold and often controversial, pushing boundaries in ways that garnered both praise and criticism. Derek was never one to shy away from risk, and his work behind the camera reflected his desire to challenge the status quo. Derek's personal life was as dramatic as any of his film roles. He was married four times, each marriage making headlines, particularly his unions with actresses Ursula and Dress, Linda Evans, and Bo Derek. His relationship with Bo Derek, whom he married when she was just 18, and he was in his late 40s, stirred controversy. But it also cemented their status as one of Hollywood's most talked about couples. Derek's reputation as a director was often intertwined with his personal life, as he frequently cast his wives in leading roles, creating a unique and often provocative body of work. In his later years, Derek's health began to decline. He struggled with cardiovascular disease, a battle that eventually led to his death on May 22, 1998, at the age of 71. Despite his health challenges, Derek remained active in the industry until the end, never losing his passion for film and storytelling. The Ten Commandments isn't just a film, it's a cinematic masterpiece that has stood the test of time. Released in 1956, it captivated audiences with its grand scale, powerful performances, and the sheer ambition of its storytelling. Even today, it's hailed as one of the greatest films ever made, a classic that continues to inspire filmmakers and viewers alike. The movie's impact on cinema is undeniable. It set a standard for epic filmmaking, combining stunning visuals with a narrative that resonated deeply with audiences across generations. Its influence can be seen in countless films that followed, each attempting to capture that same magic of blending historical grandeur with personal human stories. What makes the Ten Commandments so enduring is not just its spectacle, but the humanity at its core. The characters, brought to life by an incredible cast, are relatable in their struggles, their faith, and their flaws. Moses, with his journey from prince to prophet, and the other characters, each with their own complex arcs, made the story not just a biblical tale, but a deeply human one. It's this blend of the epic and the intimate that keeps the film relevant and beloved even decades after its release. But as we look back on the legacy of the Ten Commandments, there's a bittersweet note that lingers. All of the major cast members who once breathed life into these unforgettable characters have passed away. Charlton Heston, Yul Brynner, Ann Baxter, and the rest. They're all gone, leaving behind a legacy that is as tragic as it is monumental. Their performances have been immortalized on screen, yet their absence is felt by those who remember the vibrancy they brought to their roles. It's a reminder of the fleeting nature of life, even for those who seem larger than life. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below.